All right, question one is how much milk and how much juice do we need in order to meet or exceed a recommended daily calcium intake of 1,000 milligrams? Now we know that there's 299 milligrams per cup of milk. Okay, so 229 times M, and we add to that the number of milligrams of calcium we get from a cup of juice, 261, times the number of cups of juice, J. And we need that to be greater than or equal to meet or exceed 1,000. Okay, so just pay attention. Uh, between choices A and B, there's a subtle difference of the inequality sign. Uh, we need to make sure we are greater than or equal to because we need to meet or exceed our daily recommended value. Okay, question two is about research methods. Um, we need to try to decrease the margin of error for a study of psychology degree undergraduate students and the amount of time they read. So how do we decrease margin of error? Well, the easiest way to decrease the margin of error is to increase the sample size. So how do we increase the sample size from 75? Well, we can't bring it back down to 40 because that would decrease the sample size. We need to bring it up to 300. So we're between choices C and D. Then we need to look at what sample are we looking for. Well, psychology degree program students are the uh, subjects in this study, so we need to look at students in the undergraduate psychology degree program, not students from all degree programs. Therefore, choice C is the best answer for question two. All right, question three is about another algebraic inequality problem. We have a cost of producing n items, and we need to generate a profit. And we know that the income for each item is $12. So let's set up another equation for that. Income is $12 per item, n. So in order to make a profit, of course, we need our income to exceed our cost. Now, if we're going to do that, then we need to say 12n is greater than 7n plus 350. And we can simply solve for n to get our answer. So subtract 7 from both sides. Oops, here should be 350. And then divide by 5. And we get n is greater than 70. There's our answer, choice, uh, choice C. OK? Next. Number four, at a primate reserve, the mean age of the males is 15. OK, so 15, and the females is 19. Now we're asking for what must be true of the mean age m of the combined group of males and females. This, this question is a little bit tricky because they throw out answers a, b, and c involving 17. Now 17 is the mean of the means. so. 15 and 19, the mean of those would be 17. But that assumes something um, that the question doesn't give us, which is that the number of males and females are the same. So we don't know that the number of males and the females are the same. We don't actually know how many there are of each gender, right? Therefore, we can't make any assumptions based on the mean of the means, which is 17. So that only leaves us with choice D, which is the correct answer. And if you can think about it this way as well, the mean of the entire group of primates has to be between 15 and 19 because 19 is the um, upper cap because that's the mean of the females, whereas 15 is the lower cap, the mean of the males. Okay, so choice D here is the best answer. Now our next question number five is another research methods question. Uh, we want to know if there's an association between exercise and sleep. So we do a survey of 2,000 U.S. 16-year-olds and find convincing evidence of a positive association between exercise and sleep. So what can you conclude from this data? Well, we need to first look at uh, choices B and D and rule them out immediately because those say 16-year-olds in the world. Well, we only looked at 16-year-olds in the United States. So choices B and D are out, okay? Then can we conclude, um, according to choice C, that an increase in sleep is caused by an increase in exercise? And the answer is we cannot because we only did an association study. Here we can take a moment to talk about the difference between association versus causation. Um, they may sound very similar, 
but the research methods used to obtain conclusions about association versus causation are different. For an association study, as the question stem um, supplied, all we need is a survey. So that means we take a group of 16 year olds, okay, and we ask them, how much do you sleep? How much do you exercise? And then we plot it and we see that there's a causative association. To establish causation, however, you need to do more than that. You need to take a group of 16 year olds and assign them to different uh, exercise groups, say a group that exercises zero hours a day, a group that exercises one hour a day, and a group that exercises two hours a day, right? And so that would require um, active uh, participation on the part of the researcher to assign these 16 year olds to these different groups and then measure how much sleep they get. So there's an aspect of measurement associated with causation studies. And of course, in our question, we only did a survey. Therefore, we can only conclude that there's a positive association between exercise and sleep, not that an exercise, uh, an increase in exercise might cause an increase in sleep. So the best answer is choice A.